external carotid artery. The external carotid artery is one of the terminal branches of the common carotid artery. In general, it lies anterior to the internal carotid artery and it is a chief artery of supply to the structures in front of the neck as well as in the face. And let us talk about the course and relations of the external carotid artery. The external carotid artery begins in the carotid triangle at the level of the upper border of the thyroid cartilage opposite the disc between the third as well as fourth cervical vertebrae. It runs upwards and slightly backwards and laterally and terminates behind the mandible by dividing into maxillary and superficial temporal arteries. So here the external carotid artery has a slightly curved course so that it is anteromedial to that of the internal carotid artery in its lower part and anterolateral to the internal carotid artery in the upper part. And what are the branches? The external carotid artery gives off totally eight branches which may be grouped as anterior, posterior, medial and terminal. Now let us talk about these branches. From anterior, superior thyroid, lingual and the facial arteries. And from the posterior, occipital and posterior auricular arteries. And from the medial aspect of the external carotid artery, the only branch which arises is ascending pharyngeal artery and the terminal branches are maxillary as well as superficial temporal artery. So these are the branches which are arising from external carotid artery. Let us talk about detail about these branches. First one is superior thyroid artery. The superior thyroid artery arises from the external carotid artery just below the level of the greater cornua of the hyoid bone. As you can see the course very clearly over here, it turns downwards, forwards, parallel and just superficial to the external laryngeal nerve. So where it passes deep to the three long infrahyoid muscles finally to reach the upper pole of the lateral lobe of the thyroid gland. And here it is in relationship to the external laryngeal nerve which supplies the cricothyroid muscle and it is important to the surgeon during thyroid surgery where the artery and the nerve are close to each other but diverge slightly near the gland. So especially to avoid injury to the nerve, the superior thyroid artery is ligated as near to the gland as possible. So apart from its terminal branches to the thyroid gland, it gives off one of the very important branch which is a superior laryngeal artery which pierces the thyrohyoid membrane in company with the internal laryngeal nerve. And this is what is about the superior thyroid artery. Now let us talk about next branch of the external carotid artery called as lingual artery. The lingual artery arises from the external carotid artery opposite the tip of the greater cornua of the hyoid bone and it is tortoise in its course. It is divided into three parts by hyoglossus muscle. The first part lies in the carotid triangle where it forms a characteristic upward loop which is crossed by the hypoglossal nerve and the lingual loop permits free movements of the hyoid bone. Next is the second part. The second part lies deep to the hyoglossus along the upper border of the hyoid bone and it is superficial to the middle constrictor of the pharynx. Next is the terminal part or the third part. So the third part is called as arteria profunda linguae or the deep lingual artery. This third part of the lingual artery runs upwards along the anterior border of the hyoglossus and then horizontally forwards on the under surface of the tongue as the fourth part. So the horizontal part of the artery is accompanied by the lingual nerve. So the lingual artery gives branches like suprahyoid, dorsal, lingual and sublingual. And during surgical removal of the tongue, the first part of the artery is ligated before it gives off any branch to the tongue or to the tonsil. And this is what is about the lingual artery which is a branch of external carotid artery. 
Next, another important branch of the external carotid artery is called as facial artery. The facial artery arises from the external carotid artery just above the tip of the greater cornua of the hyoid bone. It runs upwards first in the neck as a cervical part and on the face as the facial part. As you can see, this is the cervical part and this is the facial part of the facial artery. So the course of the artery in both the places is tortoise and we will be discussing in detail about the facial artery in a separate module and next is the occipital artery. The occipital artery arises from the posterior aspect of the external carotid artery opposite the origin of the facial artery and here it is crossed at its origin by the hypoglossal nerve and in the carotid triangle the artery gives two sternocleidomastoid branches where the upper branch is the one which accompanies the axillary nerve and the lower branch arises near the origin of the occipital artery. Next is posterior auricular artery. The posterior auricular artery arises from the posterior aspect of the external carotid artery above the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. It runs upwards and backwards deep to the parotid gland but superficial to the styloid process of the temporal bone. It crosses the base of the mastoid process and ascends behind the auricle. It supplies the back of the auricle as well as the skin over the mastoid process and back of the scalp. So the branch called as stylomastoid branch is the one which enters the stylomastoid foramen and supplies the middle ear, mastoid antrum as well as air cells and the semicircular canals and the facial nerve which is present in the middle ear. Next is the ascending pharyngeal artery. Ascending pharyngeal artery is a small branch that arises from the medial side of the external carotid artery. It arises very close to the lower end of the external carotid artery. It sends meningeal branches to the cranial cavity through the foramen lacerum and the jugular foramen and hypoglossal canal. Next is the maxillary artery. The maxillary artery is considered to be the largest terminal branch of the external carotid artery. It begins behind the neck of the mandible. It runs forwards deep to the neck of the mandible below the auriculotemporal nerve and enters into the infratemporal fossa and we will be discussing in detail about this maxillary artery as a separate module. And now let us talk about the superficial temporal artery. The superficial temporal artery is a smaller terminal branch of the external carotid artery it begins behind the neck of the mandible and runs vertically upwards crossing the root of the zygoma and the preauricular point where its pulsations can be easily felt. And approximately 5 cm above the zygoma it divides into anterior and posterior branches which supply the temple as well as the scalp. So here the anterior branch anastomose with the supraorbital supratrochlear branch of the ophthalmic artery. And in addition to the branches they supply the temple, scalp, parotid gland, auricle and the facial muscles. And next one is the superficial temporal artery which gives off a transverse facial artery and the middle temporal artery which runs into the temporal fossa deep to the temporalis muscle. And by this we completed all the branches of the external carotid artery.